My name is Angela Finn, and I am uh, sponsored by Automatic to be a community organizer for the WordPress Open Source Project. As you might imagine, I am uh, deeply passionate about connecting and empowering people. And uh, very recently, I celebrated one full year of active participation in the WordPress community. Um, so before we dive too far into this, I wanted to take a quick minute to share why this talk is important. After all, you already found your way here, so why do I want to talk with you about finding your way around WordPress? This talk is um, largely driven by personal experience. I spend a lot of time speaking with WordPress community members, and many of them are new to this space. Um, and what we all share in common is that we want to share our voice on the internet, and WordPress helps us to do exactly that. And this is the coolest thing, to see so many people around the world unified by WordPress. Um, in fact, this uh, map in the background is just a screen grab from uh, meetup.com showing many of the meetup, the WordPress meetups around the world. Um, so, uh, as I continue to speak with new users, uh, new WordPressers, I quickly learned that everyone finds their way to WordPress differently. Everyone has their own unique WordPress story. And we're a very uh, multidisciplinary community. We have people with backgrounds in everything, from music to law, uh, design to education. We're kind of a grab bag of experiences. Um, and you add on top of that, um, a lot of different cultures, and socioeconomic status, and sexual orientation, um, all these differences, uh, we have a lot of different frames of references, a lot of perspectives. And that's a huge benefit to any community. All of these people add to the WordPress ecosystem, a vast, intricate, rapidly expanding universe, at the core of which is this very powerful uh, website builder, or to use a more uh, technical term, a content management system. There is a lot of information and misinformation out there as to what WordPress is and how we all work together. So finding your way around WordPress means that no matter your personal frame of reference, no matter how new you are to this community, I want you to understand this WordPress ecosystem, uh, how WordPress is built, what it even is, and why it's important for you to get involved. So, um, like I said, this talk is uh, largely driven by some personal experience. Uh, so to share a bit about my WordPress story and um, my frame of reference, this is me uh, just over a year ago. I was working at a commercial real estate consulting firm in Seattle, where the uh, developers I worked with didn't know any programming languages, um, designers never talked about fonts, and visiting a site meant this, um, going to a building that is being built, uh, hard hat required. You'd never be able to tell from this photo, but at this point in time, I've been using WordPress for eight years, and I had no idea that this community even existed. So when I did finally discover it, I was amazed. <laughs> Overwhelmed. <laughs> amazed because I suddenly found myself in the company of these very passionate, super talented human beings. Overwhelmed because that, um, but also because it's incredibly hard to find yourself in a new community, um, let alone one as large and also as uh, tightly knit as WordPress is. And you add on top of that um, a global network of individuals and businesses and information coming at you from every single direction through any media and on every single aspect of WordPress. <laughs> um, so this is uh, all of the, uh, the highlights of what I've learned in the past year. Um, albeit far more uh, succinctly than how I actually learned it. <laughs> so the WordPress Open Source Project is named as such because that is exactly what it is, powerful open source software. You might also hear terms like free and open source software or free software, but what this all means is that the core WordPress software itself is licensed under the general public license, or the GPL. And anything that is derived from core WordPress software or which requires the core software to run also inherits this license. And we see this a lot with uh, plugins and themes. 
Now, the GPL is important because it provides uh, people with four essential freedoms. Uh, freedoms when it comes to uh, using the software. The first essential freedom is the freedom to run. So anyone can run WordPress, and for any reason that they choose to. Essential freedom number two is the freedom to study. Anyone who wants to study every single line of the source code that makes WordPress uh, can do so, and they can uh, alter it so that it does specific desired computing processes. Now, these first two freedoms are of particular importance if you uh, understand programming languages. But if, like me, you don't, um, the next two freedoms also ensure that uh, you have certain freedoms when it comes to using the software. Essential freedom number three is the freedom to copy and share. So anyone can download WordPress, and it can be shared with and by anyone as many times as you would like. And essential freedom number four is the freedom to modify. So you can modify WordPress, and you can redistribute those modified copies. So with these uh, four essential freedoms, um, it really gives uh, any user of WordPress a uh, full reign over the software, and it's in place forever. So um, as Katie Heron says in Mean Girls, the limit does not exist. But wait, if WordPress is uh, free to download and you can change it and you can redistribute it, you might be wondering to yourself, um, why am I paying for that one plugin? Or how do people make money with WordPress? And those are excellent questions. Um, uh, so people, uh, there is a thriving network of uh, people who make money with WordPress. Um, and uh, they do so in a couple of key ways. Um, you're most likely paying for services associated with uh, using WordPress. Um, so the first is uh, software as a service. So if you're paying for a plugin, um, you're paying for services associated with use of that plugin. So you're paying for things like uh, bug fixes or software updates. Um, and those uh, services are limited per site. They, they can be limited per site. Uh, but use of the product itself is not restricted. The next is training. Um, there are a lot of resources online that help people uh, learn how to use WordPress. And some of those are free, and some of those are not. You might pay for some hosting services. Uh, depending on what you're doing, um, it's often uh, much cheaper and easier to pay for hosting services as opposed to um, uh, buying and maintaining your own server. And last but not least is agency work. Um, if you wanted a customized site, but you didn't want to build and maintain it yourself, you could hire a freelancer to do that work for you. So, if all of this is the case, then what is the point of open source software, and why should you care? Well, we talked a little bit about the four essential freedoms and how, um, unlike proprietary software, they give users um, a lot of freedom when it comes to using the software. The other benefit of open source is evident within the WordPress community itself. With uh, proprietary software, you often have um, a comparatively much smaller group of people um, who build all of the software um, with or without any uh, external input. And this group may have a uh, personal agenda that uh, may or may not be public knowledge. So you as a user of that software, um, you, ha uh, you have to abide by what they've set out. With open source software, on the other hand, um, anyone who is willing and able to contribute to the software can do so. And in fact, one of the principles of open source uh, states that with many eyes, all bugs are shallow. So with many eyes, or lots of collective input, um, we can very quickly uh, identify, report, and fix bugs just as we're able to uh, improve and iterate on the software itself. And having all of, that, uh, all of that input makes for a software that is far more reflective of the users as well. So the WordPress community uh, has this global network of people who are, uh, they collaborate together every single day to improve the WordPress software. So uh, my teammate, Hugh Lashbrook, has an excellent analogy of this that I'm going to share with you, uh, especially because it involves cupcakes. <laughs> so imagine that uh, you are hosting a birthday party for your friend, and you decide to make some cupcakes. 
And congratulations, you've made some excellent cupcakes and everyone is raving about them. Um, and because uh, you're a good friend and you care about your friends, uh, you uh, send people home with some extra cupcakes and you also give them the recipe so that they can make it themselves at home. About a week later, you go to visit one of your friends who presents you with a modified version of your cupcake. And you try it out. And it's amazing. They've done something to it to make it so much better. You ask them what they do, what they did, um, and they tell you. And you decide to uh, incorporate those changes into your original recipe. And then you go and you share that uh, with all of your friends because you're excited about it. Turns out they've also been making changes to your recipe, and so you start sharing all of these different changes. Um, some of them are really good. Some of them are like, hmm, raisins, really? <laughs> <laughs> you also have a specialized version. So one of your friends makes a gluten-free version of this cupcake. The point is, after just a month, you have a vastly improved recipe um, that continues to improve. And you have specialized versions that work for the people who need that. And those are really tasty options as well. WordPress is this cupcake recipe. Um, we have thousands of people around the world iterating on every aspect of WordPress and sharing the WordPress recipe. And in fact, um, WordPress is 33% uh, of the internet now, and that's huge. So with open source software like WordPress, we are able to um, not only share our voice on the internet, but we, we're, we're able to understand how that happens and we're able to add to the direction in which that continues to grow. This is really important. The fact that people, like you and I, get to decide how we share our voice on the internet. And we get to decide on how the internet itself continues to evolve. And when I say that the WordPress community is global, I literally mean that there are people around the world uh, working on WordPress. But the WordPress open source project itself doesn't have any employees. Um, some people are sponsored to work on this work, um, others are uh, volunteers who do it in their free time. Um, everyone is a volunteer, and we call these amazing people contributors. And contributors bring a, a huge range of skill sets to WordPress. Uh, we have people who are uh, software developers, or designers, or translators, or uh, people who do documentation and training, or community organizing, just to name a few. And they bring a wide range of experience levels as well. They could be users of WordPress, like a blogger, or builders of WordPress, like a plugin developer. They could be uh, freelancers, or part of a huge agency. There isn't a uh, set mold of WordPress contributor. And we need all of those people, all of those skill sets to build WordPress. And we need more of that if we're able to build a WordPress for the future. <laughs> so one question that I personally had when I first joined this community, and I now get an answer with alarming regularity, is this. Do I need to know how to code in order to contribute to WordPress? Anyone? No. 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 <laughs> you do not need to know how to code, nor do you need to have any understanding of how code works to contribute to WordPress. If you do have those skills, that's excellent. We definitely need that. And if you want to learn, this is a really great place to do so. Um, and you'll want to focus on PHP, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, but um, I'm not really going to be able to help you out there. <laughs> My point here, what I, well, the point I want to make, is that we need, I really mean it when I say that we need all different skill sets to build WordPress. All right, so if you wanted to contribute, where do you start? Well, you're going to go to make.wordpress.org. Um, and here's a site where you can create a WordPress profile, and you'll find a lot of really great information about WordPress itself. Um, but I'm going to call your attention to all of the amazing contributor teams. These are the teams that make WordPress. Um, and they are open uh, for anyone to join at any time. So if, uh, if you are a developer, you might be drawn to core, where a lot of the development work is being done. But your skills are also needed on um, test and mobile and accessibility, just to name a few. If you uh, speak multiple languages, the Polyglots team would love to have you, as would us over on community. 
if you're a content creator, um, marketing, TV, support, training, um, those would be excellent homes for you. If uh, you are a community organizer and you love to connect and empower people as well, come join us on the community team. We would love to have you. And if you're more of a generalist and not a specialist, we definitely need you. Because guess what? All of these teams have to work together in order to build WordPress. So you'll find a lot of information about all of these teams on make.wordpress.org. Um, and uh, yeah, you can explore what they're doing, what their biggest priorities are at any time. Um, but I also encourage you to uh, attend Contributor Day tomorrow. Um, that's a really fun way of getting involved and learning to contribute to WordPress. There will be people, um, representatives from these teams who will help onboard you if you're interested. And uh, you work on a project together in person and at the end of the day, everyone reports back on um, what they've accomplished. Now, to be clear, I am not suggesting that you join every single team. That would be a lot. <laughs> um, but I do want to encourage you to take some time to think about uh, the team that you want to join. Um, there's a couple of questions that might uh, help, help you figure out where you want to go. And the first is, uh, first and the easiest is, what existing skills do you have that you want to contribute? Um, leveraging skills that you already have is a really, uh, it's, a, it's probably an easier and more comfortable way of getting involved. But you should also ask yourself, what skills do you want to build or level up? Um, the WordPress community is an excellent place to do so, um, and it's uh, really helpful information for all of the teams. After all, if we want to build a uh, software that anyone can use, we don't all start out as experts, right? So you need to be able to go to a team and ask very basic questions and get clear answers in return. You also don't need to default to skills. When it comes to joining a team, think about uh, what you're most passionate about when it comes to building the future of WordPress. Um, what's most important to you? And which team do you think you can make the most impact with? Finding your why when you're doing this work is a very uh, inspiring place to start. And, uh, oh, I just noticed my mouse is right there. <laughs> Um, and uh, when you uh, figure out which team you want to join, um, you'll want to get online. So we do a lot of our work online. After all, we are a global community building open source software. Um, we have team blogs on make.wordpress.org. Sometimes you'll hear those referred to as P2s. Um, and we also do a lot of work over Slack. Um, and it's all open, so anyone can join it at any time. Uh, you just want to go to chat.wordpress.org and follow the instructions there. And when you get online, you will find yourself in the company of very uh, enthusiastic and opinionated people. And I say that with all the love in my heart. Um, we need opinionated people uh, to do this work. We really do. And I, I also truly believe that, uh, for the most part, we do our best in being welcoming to each other um, and to new people. I also believe that we can do better. Um, and not for any ill intent. Uh, moving from a uh, eight to five, a traditional eight to five office to a primarily online community, I've personally had to adjust my communication style. Uh, so here are a few tips that I found helpful. This first one is the worst um, <laughs> because I am a terribly impatient person. Um, but we are working with a, a volunteer community. We all have lives out offline um, that require our attention and need to be prioritized. Um, in addition, uh, it takes time for uh, decisions and consensus to be built within open source. So if you're able to find some patience in your collaboration, um, you'll probably have a more enjoyable time. The next is to provide all the context and feedback. If you've been working on a project, or if you're really passionate about something, that's excellent. You've probably invested a lot of time and effort, and you know that subject matter inside and out. But if you're bringing that to somebody else, they don't have your frame of reference. So it's kind of up to you to uh, help them understand you. So provide as much context as possible um, so that they better understand you. 
and add to everyone's knowledge by answering questions and providing feedback. And when in doubt, ask all the questions. Um, coupled with this is to uh, don't assume too much. Um, this community is made up of people who are mighty helpers who just want to answer all of your questions. We're also uh, individuals, so we don't all have the same shared values, right? So if you ever do have a question or any doubt, ask that question, but just do it kindly and politely. Um, one great uh, example of this that I see uh, regularly is when it comes to uh, deciding on deadlines. Within a multidisciplinary community, there's a good chance that you don't have full understanding of somebody else's job. Um, so it's really easy to undervalue that job or underestimate the amount of time it takes for something to happen. Um, so if you are, uh, for example, not a designer and you need a graphic uh, by next week, um, but you think maybe it's only going to take, like, I don't know, an hour. Instead of saying, hey, can you have this to me in an hour, um, which is a question, but not a very helpful one, um, talk to your designer who's actually going to do that work and ask them, share with them context and say that I need this by next week for reasons. And um, what would it take to make this happen? That's a, very, uh, that's a far more powerful way of collaborating. So I have one more call to action for you that um, this one's totally biased because I, I love this community and I don't want your WordCamp fun to end after WordCamp Boston is over. So it's this, join or start your local WordPress meetup. Um, so go online, search for your city name along with WordPress and meetup, and if there is one, attend and make some new WordPress friends. If there isn't, uh, come talk with me. I would love to help you start a local meetup in your community. Um, and meetups that meet regularly uh, can go on to organize work camps like this one. And in fact, if you're local to Boston, um, these are the amazing organizers of the Boston meetup, and they're also the organizers of this work camp. Um, you can see all of their upcoming meetings, uh, upcoming meetups, uh, meetup.com backslash Boston WordPress meetup. Um, the other reason to attend meetups is uh, you can also get lots of WordPress help, um, learn about all the coolest, latest things. Um, but meetups are also a really great place to uh, build some public speaking skills if that's something you're interested in. Uh, you can go and talk about anything related to WordPress. And the Boston group has a uh, open call for speakers, so you can go to bostonwp.org backslash speak at a meetup um, and apply there. Um, in any event, Attending a meetup is an excellent uh, start or continuation of your personal WordPress journey. So uh, that's all I have for you today. I would love to answer any questions that you have. Yes. Um, and uh, can I trouble you to come and use the microphones? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just, I know it may seem like that. Not a very smart question, but who started WordPress? And does somebody actually own WordPress? <laughs> so, uh, WordPress, uh, the open source software, um, was uh, co-founded by a few people, the most uh, well-known of which is Matt Mullenweg. Um, and so, uh, the WordPress open source software, uh, open source project isn't, I mean, it's on, I would argue that it's owned by the community. Questions? Can you tell us about your role? Is this a full-time role? Yeah, um, so uh, I am sponsored by Automatic um, to do this work full-time. Uh, so as a WordPress community organizer, um, I work regularly with uh, meetups, meetup organizers, and WordCamp organizers, um, helping them to make events like this happen. Um, and I say that saying that they do all the work, not me. <laughs> What's the benefit to Automatic to sponsor you? Oh, um, so uh, the question is, what is the benefit to Automatic to sponsor me? Um, so, uh, an Automatic, uh, just to, for everyone's shared knowledge, um, Automatic is a company uh, owned by Matt Mullenweg, um, who, uh, so 
Automatic uh, has a number of different subsidiaries, including Jetpack and Woo and WordPress.com, which is not to be confused with WordPress.org. Um, the benefit of sponsoring uh, people like me and a number of other uh, contributors who work on the WordPress open source project um, is so that we continue building this software. Um, and so there are lots of other companies that also sponsor people to do um, this kind of work um, because we add to uh, open source for all the reasons. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Uh, what, what do you see as the greatest challenge that the local meetup groups are facing? I know I talked to a lot of people who have meetup groups that um, have less in-person attendance than in the past because it is so easy to just go online and watch YouTube videos. Um, what, what, what are you seeing out there and how are, how are those challenges being addressed? Sure. Um, so uh, to summarize the question, uh, hopefully I'm getting this correct, it's uh, what's the greatest challenge to uh, building and continuing a meetup um, in a world where uh, information is so readily available online? Yes. Um, so meetups do uh, have a number of challenges, the, one of which is to maintain attendance and build. Um, one thing, uh, I think having in-person events in a primarily online space is really valuable because you get a lot from this kind of connection that you don't um, online. And so the people who seek that out um, do so for a number of reasons. Um, and so what I always encourage meetup groups to do is to add lots of variety to their meetups. Um, and so what that means is that you don't want to have just one single organizer doing all of the work for that meetup, right? You want it. Um, you want multiple people to expand the network of the meetup. Um, so all of these people have different skill sets that they bring, different networks so that they can bring um, speakers uh, for those specific topics, they can facilitate discussions around those topics. Um, and thinking about how to um, diversify your meetup format as well um, is a really good thing to do. So um, there's a community in uh, Dusseldorf that uh, they bring everyone in, they have a specific topic uh, that everyone's here to talk about, but there's no facilitated, there's no speaker. So they just uh, meet together and they each talk about why they're there in relation to that topic, and you see natural or natural conversations start to arise out of that. Um, so even if there's no set agenda, um, having some little direction often inspires a lot of different uh, conversations. And the point of all of it is to connect with other people, right? So, um, and if, if anybody has some specific uh, challenges that they're facing in their meetup, um, I would just love to come chat with you about that. Does that help answer the question? <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyone else? Um, if not, I'll be here all weekend, and I would love to chat with you. Um, I will also share my slides online afterwards. Um, thank you all so much for your time. Thank you.